The first project I ever built in JavaScript was tic-tac-toe. I was studying at General Assembly and week three was when we were to put our new skills to the test. We had just learned HTML, CSS and JavaScript, had touched on some jQuery, and so we had a week to build a tic-tac-toe. So we're gonna build a tic-tac-toe clone today using React with Vite as a build tool, TypeScript instead of JavaScript, and Tailwind for the CSS. If that sort of content interests you, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and give the video a like. So we're on the Vite page, uh, and Vite is a build tool that can be used in place of something like Webpack. As you can see, you can set up Vite with different frameworks, and we'll get started with the actual instructions here. So we will type in npm create Vite latest. We're going to name our project React Tic Tac Toe, and we can select a framework here. So we're using React, and we're going to use TypeScript. Let's cd into the repo and run npm install, and then we can run npm run dev to get started. So if you visit the app, you can see that it has a setup template with a button that just adds numbers to account. So we're gonna install Tailwind next, and I'm on the documentation here. I'll just copy this npm install command. and run the command. So let's open the code in VS Code. And I'm gonna add the Tailwind config file. In here, I'll paste this um, boilerplate and I'm gonna copy these uh, CSS imports as well, which is what we need. and I can delete some of the code that I don't need. So we'll delete this app CSS. We'll rename this app TypeScript file to game. And let's clear out all of the boilerplate that's inside of this app component. Uh, that is working for some reason. And because we weren't running the app. So we restart that and you can see that we have the tic-tac-toe page showing up there. So we'll change the title of the app so it shows up as tic-tac-toe in the browser. And we're gonna start by adding some Tailwind. So we do this by adding class names. We're gonna do a full height with a padding of eight. We're gonna add the text color as slate 800. And we're gonna create a background behind this div. So the background will be a gradient and we're gonna use a cyan and a blue color. and I wanna wrap this text in a H1. I can do that with Command Shift P and type in wrap in the command palette and that's a really handy shortcut. So we'll add some Tailwind CSS to this as well. So we'll center the text, we'll make it a large size, give it a margin bottom of four and we're gonna give it a font of the display font which we will set up later. We'll also make the text white um, and you can see the text still so something's not right there. And maybe it's because I don't have TypeScript files there, but that still doesn't seem to work. And this just goes to show you should read the docs properly. So uh, I didn't actually set up the Vite um, version of the app properly. So these are the actual documentation that I should have followed. So you can see I'm missing post CSS and auto prefixer and the config is slightly different. Now this command is what I would use to set up the config automatically, but as you can see, I've already done it myself 
So instead of resetting it up, I'm just gonna copy and paste the stuff that is different here. So we'll save that. Make sure there's nothing else I'm missing. Let's restart the app again. And now you can't see anything, but the text is white. So um, we've got white text, but we don't have our background gradient. So I'll come back to that. I'm just gonna set up a second um, element here where the board is gonna go. And I'll just put some placeholder text for the board and placeholder text for the scores, which we will add in later. So you can see that they are there and it does work. So we now need to figure out what is wrong with the gradient. And as you can see, I have figured it out. I've used the wrong syntax should be to right instead of from right. So it works, but the app is a little bit funny. So let's see if we can fix that with some CSS. So that looks a lot better. And now I'm just gonna paste in some code here, some links that will get our Google font working. Uh, so I've already set up a lobster from Google fonts and now I need to um, configure it with the tailored config. So this, according to the documentation, is how you set up a custom font. You need to import the default theme. You need to extend the theme with font family. Um, and we're gonna call the display font and import lobster for that. So you need to do a lobster and then extend the default theme. And now you can see we've got this nice script font for our actual title. Okay, let's start with the JavaScript. So I'm gonna set up an initial game state. The game state is basically what you know players have been played on each square of the board. So we'll set that up with nine empty strings and we're gonna map over those nine empty strings and we're gonna create a box or a square for each of those strings. So I'm gonna call each string player because ultimately it will be X or O that goes in there. I'm gonna map over the game state call player. I need an index for later. And for now, we're just gonna put a div with each player in it and I'm gonna populate that with an X and O so you can see something. And you can see it does work. But obviously it's not yet a board because we haven't added any styling to it. So I don't wanna just work off this initial game state, so I'm gonna import use state from React and I'm gonna create a game state variable and a set game state function. And we will pass in initial game state as the initial game state. So I can now change that to map over game state and I should see the same thing. I'll add some X's in there again, just to make sure that we can see stuff. And there we go, we've got the X's. But you will see that uh, we haven't added a key prop to the, um, to the map array. So we need each element that we map over to have a key prop and we're gonna use index for now. Generally, you don't wanna use index, but in this case, we don't have any choice. Let's add some styling as well. For each box, we're gonna add a, a height of 36. We're gonna add a border gonna make that border width of four and we'll make it a color of slate 200. We want that to be the display font, so the same uh, font that you see in the title. And we'll make it a pretty large font size. We wanna center it inside of the box as well. And then we're gonna make the uh, box a flex box with a justify content of center and uh, align items of center. And then we're gonna give it cursor pointer so it looks like a button. So now we have some boxes, they're not laid out properly and we also still have that problem with the background color which we'll fix later. But we need to make the parent box a grid. So we're gonna give it a class name of grid with some um, styling for three columns. We're gonna put a gap of three between each one. And we'll add the auto margin and a width of 96. And now you can see that we have a nice looking tic-tac-toe board. Let's see if we can fix that background color. So we'll give that a height of 100% and that looks a bit better. So let's create a square component. We wanna extract some of that logic into this square component that we can then import into game. So we'll copy this for now. It doesn't look big, but it will get a bit bigger, which is why we're extracting it. Let's change it to uh, just pass in the children as a prop. We don't put the index inside of this component. We put it as we, we put it where we actually map the component. And so let's set up the props where children is a React node. 
So we satisfied TypeScript there, and now we can import Square. So we can change this to a Square component. We'll keep the E, but we'll keep the index, excuse me, and then we can remove the class name. And you can see that it still works. So we're gonna wrap the children in a span here because we need to do some separate styling for um, hover styles and for text colors. And I'm gonna just create some um, ternaries here that allow us to style it based on whether there is a player selected or not. So instead of children, I'm gonna actually pass in player as a, as a prop. So that's now a string instead of a React node. which means I need to refactor this to pass in player as a prop instead of rendering the children. I can use this spread syntax because it's object notation, player equals player. It's the same prop name as the uh, key being passed in. So it still works. So I'm gonna change this uh, styling to a string literal so I can append the hover styles I've extracted that because it's very long. Uh, this is the problem I have with uh, TypeScript, uh, excuse me, not TypeScript, with Tailwind, is that uh, it's just a long string. So this just makes it a bit cleaner. And then over the span, we're gonna add some transform um, class names. So this will allow us to style it when we uh, have a new player coming in or when we're hovering over it. So there's the hover styles as you can see. And once we actually set up the JavaScript to add a letter to it, you will see that um, the, the letter itself actually scales in a little bit. So now each square needs to get an on click and we'll create a, create a handle cell click function. Um, we're also gonna pass in the index to square and we're gonna use that to create a data cell index um, attribute. So we need to update our props for TypeScript. Index is a string. In fact, it's a number. I think I need to fix that. Um, and on click is a function. So with the index, I'm going to create a data cell index so I know what cell I've clicked on. I'm going to put it in the span as well, just in case. And then the div itself takes the on click. So you can see handle cell click will take an event. Uh, it's a TypeScript complaining, so I need to figure that out. And then I can get the attribute of the data cell index by going event target get attribute and pass in the string of the data attribute. For now, I'm just gonna type in any because I did spend a while trying to figure out what the right type for event is in this case, and I wasn't, it wasn't working for me properly. So uh, we're just gonna do a bit of a shortcut here and, and use any against event. And this is where I pick up the error with the uh, index type. So that is not a string, but it's a number. So you can see how TypeScript works pretty well there. So we're gonna test out our on click here. We'll open the Chrome console and you can see when I click on each cell, it tells me which cell I'm clicking on. So let's refactor that to actually do something and we will create a cell index and assign the target value to it and we want that as a number. So now we can see if that cell itself has a value in the game state by taking the cell index and using the game state and trying to figure out what's already there. Currently, we don't have any current values because these cells are empty. So one thing we do need to do is set a current player in state so we can change it after every move. And we will put X as the initial current player. So when I click on a cell, if there was a current value in it already, I don't want to override that. So I'm just going to do an early return here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the game state into an array called new values. So 
I don't want to mutate the game state directly. And then I can apply the value of the current player to the cell index that was clicked. And then I can reset those new values in the game state. <clears throat> you can see now when I click, the X glides in nicely. And there we go. We are actually, and we're actually adding uh, the player to the game state. But we haven't called a change player yet. So every time we click in it, it's currently X. So we're going to create this change player uh, function where we basically set the current player to the player that isn't currently the current player. So if current player is X, then we will set it to O, otherwise we'll set it to X. And I'm gonna call change player at the moment in a use effect. So I'm gonna watch for when the game state changes. So we'll create a use effect and in the dependency array, we will put game state and then I will call it change player anytime game state changes. So we'll give that a refresh, clear that up. And now we have O, X, and O. So that's not how we're actually gonna do it. The first thing we need to do after every move is check for a winner. So instead of that, I'm gonna put check for winner and I'm gonna create a check for winner function. But to check for a winner, I need to know what the winning combinations are. So I'm just gonna paste this in here and you can see that it's an array of arrays. And each array is a combination that is a winning combination. So zero, one, two are the top three cells and so on. So I'm gonna start off with a variable and I'm gonna call let round one equals false. And then we're gonna loop over the winning combos. And the first win combo, we're gonna get winning combos, the index. And we're gonna create A, B, and C variables, which are the game state. Use the index of the winning combo and see if A, B, and C, those three values include an empty string. And if they do, it means that, well, you can't, that combination isn't one. So we're gonna use the continue operator, which basically will restart the loop and the next index. So it'll skip anything that's below it, but it doesn't break the loop. Then we can check if all three are the same, which means that the player has one, because it could be all three X's diagonally across or down. And then we're gonna go break, because we're gonna exit the loop by breaking. And then once we've broken, we can check if round one is true. So round one could be false. If we've looped over everything and we haven't got a winning match, then we continue. So if round is one, we will do a window alert. And we will just congrat congratulate the current player for being the winner. And then we can return. So we can just break from there. The reason we're returning is because we want more logic if the round is not one. What we're going to do here is we're going to check for a draw. So if the game if the game is finished, but the game state includes any empty, doesn't include any empty strings, then that means the game's ended in a draw because every square has been filled in, but there is no winner. So in this case, we can do an alert to say that the game ended in a draw, and then we return, and then we'll change player. So let's test it out real quick. And there we go, we've hit, we've hit O three times in a row and we say, congrats player O, you're the winner. But as you can see, we don't see O until after the alert disappears. So we're gonna do a little hack here and what we're gonna do is set a timeout on the alert. So if the round is won, I'm gonna call a handle win function after a half a second. So that should give us enough time to change the game state and for the, um, the the last move to show in the square and inside of handle win we'll, we'll just put our alert and we're going to do the same for um, for a draw so I'm just going to copy that across and we'll say handle draw cut the alert out of there and create a handle draw function
And then after a game has been won or drawn, we want to reset the board. So we want to reset all the values to the initial game state. So we can do that inside of handle win. And we'll do it again inside of handle draw. Let's save that and test it out. And now you can see the O does show up and then it shows the alert. And we'll play for a win for X here. Works the same for X. And now let's play for a draw. So the game has ended in a draw because all the squares have been filled in. There are no empty spaces in the squares. So the next thing we want to do is set up the scores. And the scores will keep a track of how many wins X has had and how many wins O has had. So we'll start off with another variable called initial scores. We'll create that as an object with key value pairs of X and O. X will of course start with zero wins and O will start with zero wins. And then we're going to manage those scores in state. So we pass in initial scores to set up that state. Then inside of handle win, we need to now adjust the score. So the current player, if they've just won, we're gonna up their score by one and then we're gonna set it back in state. So again, we will create a new scores object and that involves spreading the current scores object. We will then use that to mutate the current player score with the new player score, which is current player score plus one. And then we will set that back into state. And of course, we need to assign a const to new scores. You can't just set it up like that. As you can see, there are some uh, TypeScript uh, errors there. So we need to actually set up scores and tell it what sort of type it is. So for key value pair, you can literally just do key of string and the value is a number as we know. And then we assign that to initial scores. And now you can see those uh, error messages, those red lines are gone. So instead of scores go here, we want to actually put the scores there. And we're going to start with some text that actually shows who the next player is. So we can keep a track of who's, whose turn it is. and we will just put that as the current player. Here we will keep a track of player X wins and we'll put the value of that inside of a span. So we can do that scores of X. We can copy this and just change it for O. Save that and have a look and now you can see it shows some zeros and it also keeps track of our next player. And now once we player O is one, this score adds up to one for player O and then player X wins, the score adds up to one for player X. So our scores now work. So let's add some styling to that using Tailwind again. So add a class name of an automatic margin with a width of 96, so it's the same as the width of the board. Make the text a little bit bigger. Then each of these paragraphs will get the same class names. Probably could have assigned these class names to the parent div, it probably would have worked. So now you can see that the this text there is white and a bit larger. The problem is when we refresh the, uh, the browser, the scores disappear, but we want to persist that. So we're going to use local storage. So I'm going to set up a use effect here. And inside of that use effect, when the component mounts, which is why I have an empty array, I can get the stored scores from our local storage. 
So I'm going to get local storage dot get item scores, and that will return the value of scores if there is one. And you can see I have a TypeScript error there. So we'll come back and figure that out. So in the meantime, I'm going to set scores in state as the stored scores. So I'm going to do uh, other um, if there is no scores in local storage, I'm going to return an empty string. So let's see what happens there. So once there is a win, I've got the new scores, then I can say set uh, the new scores in local storage once I have that updated value. And this again needs to be a string, so I'm going to take json.stringify and pass in the new scores because that's an object and you can't store an object directly in local storage, it has to be a string. So you can see we've got an error here and if I have a quick look at it, it's got a json error with json parse, so there's something wrong with what I'm doing there. Um, so I don't see an error uh, in the actual linter, but turns out what I can't do is parse an empty string. As you can see, that's the same error. So I just checked that to see what the error was. And that is the same error that I'm getting. So I need to figure that out. So instead of doing that, I'm going to assign the local storage value to stored scores. And then I'm going to parse that only if stored scores exists. Because on initial mount, the first time someone uses this browser to play this game, stored scores aren't going to exist. And I don't need that line anymore. So let's give that a refresh. So we got zero wins. Let's play the game a couple of times, see what happens. Player O is the winner. There is player O wins. Let's give player X a win. And then those two scores have added up. And if we refresh a few times, you can see that it still um, shows up. So it persists the scores in the local storage of the browser. So the last thing we want to do here is we don't want to actually check for winner when the game state um, is mounted. So that basically will happen when you first open the game. So we want to check that the game state is not equal to initial game state before we proceed. And uh, just notice that we still have this issue with the the uh, the height in the window. So if I go into index CSS, um, I'm just going to add a height of 100% to the HTML as well. There we go. And there's our tic-tac-toe board. Thank you for sticking around this long. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If there is anything similar that you would like to see me build or any other videos that you'd like to see me work on, please let me know in the comments below. On the screen now are a couple more videos that you might be interested in, so please make sure to click through to those and have a watch. Thank you for watching, happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video.